Um, so WA Health currently receives quite a number of feedback items. Um, from a complaints point of view, and we have a legislative requirement to focus on complaints. So while I support Michael's view that there are opportunities to review compliments and also there's non-formal um, contacts, our requirements around complaints are there to measure and monitor them. So we have around 4,500 per annum per year within the health service. And, and sometimes people raise multiple issues within their complaint. And totally, we have around 7,000 issues. So as I mentioned, some people are concerned about the quality of care. Other people concerned about things like the communication, how well their um, clinician dealt with them from a communication point of view, how well were their needs considered. And so those forms of feedback can come to us in multiple formats. So, so from a frequency point of view, so the things we most commonly receive descending to the lowest category, we mostly receive feedback forms. So many of the hospitals and health services have suggestion boxes or other forms of feedback form that people can opt to, to give their feedback on. Next down, we often receive things in writing. So that can be a formal letter. After that, emails. After that, we often have phone calls. And then some people prefer to come in in, a, in person. And so Michael mentioned the importance of the personal contact. So many um, hospitals and sites have a consumer liaison person who can be with you while you want to register your concerns, listen to you, express them, and communicate them as you wish to, rather than in those other more impersonal forms of contact. Then we also have online feedback forms that can be used as well, and, the, and they're used at, at the um, less frequent uh, form. So as I said, my unit, we often focus on the quality of care because we're looking at other things that relate to the quality of care. But the feedback, whatever sort it comes to, is, as Michael suggested, an opportunity for service improvement. So I thought I'd just end with giving you a couple of local examples that I asked my colleagues at the hospitals to share with me. And we're going to hear more from Todd around Royal Perth and the experiences there. Um, but a couple of the things that they mentioned had changed due to the feedback that had been received were from King Edward, a story there to let us know that um, some of the um, people, the parents there who had uh, a bereavement, so they had lost their baby, often a newborn. There's a memorial garden there. I don't know if any of you have been to King Edward and seen the memorial garden. But um, someone, and I'm, I'm not sure when this exactly happened, but felt concerned enough to give feedback to say that there was an excessive number of no smoking so signs in that area that was changing the mood of the area and distracting them from the things that they wanted to focus on when they were you know, in that bereaved period. And so the hospital took that on board and while it remains a no smoking area, it's not the main thing you see in that area. Another example from my regional colleagues in the Midwest was that they, they wanted to ha um, give me an opportunity to share an example with a program that they introduced with feedback. And one of the categories that we often get concerns about uh, in, in contacts or in uh, complaints is around discharge and uh, transfer to home. And so one of the things that had been of concern in the Midwest, and, and if you know that Geraldton is the major hospital in the Midwest, was that they introduced a program in that hospital called Cal Barry is not a suburb of Geraldton. <laughs> um, because that was because it was really important that the clinicians who worked in Geraldton, sometimes they're locals and they know the Northwest or the Midwest, but sometimes they're often not locals. They may be international clinicians who come to work with us for a short period of time and share their skills and expertise, but don't know the local environment, don't know how far it is to get home from Geraldton to Cal Barry. So Calbarry is not a suburb of Geraldton was their program, just to let people know that it was a long way home and that when you're doing discharge arrangements, you need to take that on board, whether that be for medication provision or just comfort or noting about you know, someone's mobility. It was important that that was considered. And so I just wanted to finish at that point and hand over to my colleague Candice, who also works in the Department of Health, um, and she's going to share a different perspective, um, but I also look forward to any questions you might have in the panel discussion later on. Thank you.